Good morning. My name is Ryan Doppelmeyer. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the Director of Faith Formation here at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. And I am so thrilled to be sharing this service with you today. I am a middle-sized, middle-aged white woman wearing black shirt, brown skirt, with a new coffee stain. And I asked Rev. Jen if I could share a service with you all because I have been learning about something really important that I want to share. I have been learning about some changes about Unitarian Universalism that will be up for a vote in June. If you want to talk about the service or some of these changes, you're welcome to stay here after the service for a listening circle that I'm hosting right here in the sanctuary. Maybe go get your coffee, come on back. Also, if you feel like you are inspired to get up and move around during the service, um, feel free. You are also invited to create some art if you feel so inspired. I've put up some paper here, some in the sanctuary, some in the social hall, with a little bit of a start, maybe a little inspiration with a prompt to help with creativity and I'm excited to see what you might create. Octavia Butler told us, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. In her parable series of science fiction books, her main character, living in a dystopian world of the near future, creates a new religion based entirely on the unpredictability of life. God is change. Whew. Personally, the inevitability of change in life is something that took me far too long to learn to accept. I like predict predictability. I don't like surprises. I might have some control issues. <laughs> but I realize that some things are beyond my control. I can't stop change, but I can control the way I respond to it. So this morning, I'm inviting you to learn about some changes with me. I invite you to lean in with curiosity and an open mind. Come and let us worship together. Today we have a butterfly meditation. Are you, now do you all practice meditation sometimes? A little bit, sometimes? Okay, well, I'm gonna invite you to um, practice because meditation takes practice. So what, what position do you like to sit in when you're, when you're meditating? Just, be comfortable, okay? And relax, 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 relax. So today's service is about change and exploring new things. And it's hard to imagine a creature that faces more change in its life than a caterpillar when they change into a butterfly, right? The caterpillar has to let go of itself and then be open to becoming something totally, totally new. And so we're going to imagine ourselves as a caterpillar and then a butterfly. So you can close your eyes if you want to. Imagine that you are a bright and beautiful, colorful caterpillar. There you are full and resting on a leaf, full because you've been eating all day and you have explored your territory and now you're ready for a rest. Take in a deep breath and imagine yourself growing more and more still and silent. And now you feel calm, you feel settled 
and your chrysalis is starting to form around your body and it wraps you in this wonderful, warm, cozy cocoon. You are nice and safe in there. And as the wind starts to blow a little bit, you feel the branches of the tree move back and forth kind of rocking you in safety. It's gentle and it's relaxing. With every breath you take, you feel calmer and calmer. You feel every part of your caterpillar body relaxing. And then you feel something stirring and changing you feel a wing appearing on one side and then another. And slowly and safely, a butterfly is forming. It has all of your favorite colors. And you gently breathe in and you breathe out. Can you imagine your wings spreading, stretching out? Now you're outside the chrysalis and you spread those wings out in the sun and those wings are starting to dry. And now you can start flapping those wings a little bit. Flutter, flutter, flutter. And when you're ready, you as the butterfly, you begin to fly up and up and up and you're out flying around in the sunshine. The breeze is carrying you up and away and into the clouds. Your colors are vibrant. The breeze is warm. The sun is shining. Breathe in and breathe out. Each breath of the wind takes away your worries and lifts them away. You are free. You are free. You are here and you are free. This is Change Sings by Amanda Gorman. I can hear change humming in its loudest, proudest song. I don't fear change coming, and so I sing along. I scream with the skies of red and blue streamers. I dream of the cries of tried and true dreamers. I'm a chant that rises and sings. There is hope where my change sings. Though some don't understand it, those windmills of mysteries, I sing with all the planet and its hills of histories. I hum with a hundred hearts each of us lifting a hand. I use my strengths and my smarts, take a knee to make a stand. I'm bright as the day each, I'm bright as the light each day brings. There's love where my change sings. I show others tolerance, though it might take some courage. I don't make taller fences, I fight to build a better bridge. I talk not only of distances from where and how we came, I also walk our differences to show we are the same. I'm a movement that roars and springs. There's a wave where my change sings. Change sings where? There, inside me. Because I'm the change I want to see. As I grow, it grows like seeds. I am just what the world needs. I'm the voice where freedom rings. You're the love your bright heart brings. You are the wave starting to spring. For we are all the change we sing. We are what the world is becoming. And we know it won't be long. We all hear change strumming. Won't you sing along? And now, transformation. Children are young, so you may not have experienced transformation or a big change. 
I will share an example of my transformation, and then adults or children can share if you would like. For example, have you, as an adult, experienced transforming love as you found your mate, a fulfilling career, a trip that transformed you? Kids, perhaps you have had a life-changing experience. Some kids change people they live with. Some change their pronouns. Some move houses or schools. So I was lonely. Teen years and early college years were rough and lonely. I thought, maybe if I get married, that will help. Not. <laughs> maybe if I had a baby, that will help. Um, lonely, lonely. So single mom, more years of college, working a lot, lonely. I did find that there was a nice universe out there. So I knew I was OK. That was my first transformation. <coughs> the force was with me. Still striving not to be lonely. Married again briefly, lonely. Single grandma, lonely. When I was, a lonely, when I was lonely and there was a problem, it was like the wind could knock me over. Then my mom and I worked on our relationship and that was a great transformation. I knew love in a new way. Then my parents died, but the force was always with me. Lonely. More years of working until I moved here about 10 years ago. I was very ill and lonely for a few years. I came to UUCE, still lonely for a few years. Then. People started remembering my name, following up on something that I'd mentioned before. Being friendly, laughing together, smiles, hugs. People who I didn't really know would say meaningful things to me as if I mattered. I actually started feeling different. People commented that I seemed different. I do believe that being around this place has transformed me in a good way. Now, when there's a problem, it's more like I'm a butterfly who just sails on the wind <laughs> instead of letting the wind knock me over. <laughs> so I'll just remind you that if you need to get up and walk around, kids, youth, if you'd like to go back to your seats or Draw on some walls, only the walls with paper on them. <laughs> you are more than welcome to do so. I encourage you to do so. Adults and elders too, yeah. <sighs> but I'm also going to invite you to travel back in time with me. Who here has seen the classic movie, Back to the Future. Oh, quite a few of us have. Fantastic. So, like Marty McFly in that film, we're going to travel back in time to get a better understanding of who we are today. Marty McFly, played by a young Michael J. Fox, used a car which transformed into a time machine. That was done by his friend, a scientist, Doc Brown. He kind of accidentally traveled back in time to 1955 and met his parents while they were still in high school. He watched events unfold that defined his parents' characters and shaped his whole family's history. So we're gonna kind of give that a try. I don't have a DeLorean, but I do have a flux capacitor. So, I'm gonna go over here. So I bet you did not know that you could build a time machine out of cork cardboard boxes and duct tape, but you know, teachers can do 
mysterious things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to push a few buttons here. OK, we're going back, back, back to 1961. OK, phew, we're here. President John F. Kennedy has created the Peace Corps. Yuri Gagarin became the first human to reach space. Courageous freedom writers are challenging racism and segregation in the South. The CIA has unsuccessfully attempted to overthrow Castro in the Bay of Pigs. And disposable diapers were just invented. <laughs> so we're not visiting 1961 just for fun. But we're here to walk in the shoes of two groups, historically quite similar in values, but distinct in origin and culture, who are coming together after, after years of kind of flirting with each other and having some false starts. They aren't exactly the same. One has been called the faith of the head. Emphasizing an individual's relationship with one divine source. The other has been called the faith of the heart. With a focus on the good works that humans have the power to do for each other, to make the world a better place and save ourselves. But they aren't too different. With liberal values that emphasize the importance of the choices we make in the world today, that seems to be more of a concern than anything that happens in the hereafter. The Universalist Church of America and the American Unitarian Association are officially becoming the Unitarian Universalist Association. They're actually a little behind the times. They've already pooled some resources to create things like hymnals, and their youth organizations, they got together back in 1954. So now they finally come to the conclusion that these small denominations would be stronger together. But as with any big change, I'm, I'm sure there were some concerns, some worries, some wonderings. Would this really be a good move for those two fates? Would one get swallowed by the other? Would anything be lost? Whew. I'm sure there is hope, excitement, but also doubt. Imagine the charged feelings of the folks at the original combined assembly. The religion that you love, perhaps the church of your parents or grandparents, is never going to be the same. But it is changing to move forward to meet the needs of the present world. All right, enough of 1961. Whew, we're going to try this one more time. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, okay. Whew. 1985. Okay. Wham and Madonna are on the radio. Ronald Reagan is president and starting his second term. Super Mario Brothers is released on Nintendo. That's a good one. Ah, U.S. sanctions have finally started on South Africa while Nelson Mandela sits in prison. And Michael Jordan is the NBA's Rookie of the Year. So, back in 1961, the UUA wrote six principles to define what this new organization stood for, what it meant to be a member of a UU church. And with all of the philosophical differences, what are the things that folks had in common? They were really great at the time, really forward thinking for 1961. But at times, they are changing. And some folks, particularly women leading a movement in the 80s, are chafing at language that centers the dignity of man, the ideals of brotherhood, 
and the cooperation with men of goodwill. Still, other folks are not quite loving the language about Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God. And still other folks are kind of saying, have we forgotten the earth? We haven't included anything about caring for the earth or other creatures. So the original six principles were good, great for the time. They've served their purpose. They brought together two really different groups of people. But it's time to move forward. Environmentalism has taught us that it is vital to stop ignoring the needs of our planet and other forms of life that we're connected to. Feminism has taught us that patriarchal, patriarchal language does not belong in the defining documents of our faith. And Fewer of us are defining ourselves as Christian. We don't need to place our Christian roots above all others. So, okay, one last time. Okay. Okay, we're actually in last year, June of 2023, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was there. In a business meeting of the UUA General Assembly, there's about to be a vote on whether or not to change, to accept new changes to Article 2 of the bylaws. Okay. So Article 2 is where those six original principles lived. Okay. In 85, that was actually changed to seven distinct principles. Now, we're asking, do we need something different? Oh, our seven principles are right up there. It's a lot of words, I know. If you've been in EU spaces long, you've probably grown familiar with the principles. These seven principles. We could probably go on a scavenger hunt around our church and find them in different places. They're in the hymnal. They're in handy-dandy pocket cards. They're on books on Unitarian Universalism in the library. They're really important. They're in our UCE's church bylaws. Actually, we have a bonus because we voted to adopt an eighth principle, specifically calling out racism a few years back. If you had the good fortune to grow up UU, you probably at some point memorized a song or kid-friendly language versions of those seven principles. So they sound really great, right? So why would we be voting to change them? Well, beyond the fact that our Unitarian Universalist Association bylaws require us to check in on those things every 15 years or so to make sure it's still relevant. We are a living, breathing faith. One of the aspects of Unitarian Universalism that I personally greatly appreciate is the understanding that revelation is not sealed. We have not learned all that there is to learn. We do not understand all there is to know about the mysteries of the universe, and we likely never will. But we are constantly moving forward. We are constantly learning. One of the privileges of living in the world right now is being a witness to the understandings unfolding in our time. I am so excited that our faith doesn't just take one statement of faith and declare that we are done, that we figured it all out. No. Just as all of our ideas grow and change over time with experience that we've gained in our lifetimes, so must our church. So just as we have a good idea about what values, just so you guys understand the change that we're talking about here? Can someone help me? Actually, 
could seven someones help me? Because the proposed changes are a move from seven principles to six values. <laughs> I've been talking a long time. So maybe someone would want to read one of these for me, with me. Yeah. And maybe Rev Jen will come to you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do, Sam, do you have a favorite value? Uh-huh. Wow. So I think he gets like an A for doing his homework. He has these in his head, in his back pocket already. Is it important that they go in order? Nope. Okay, then. They were actually on purpose, not numbered. Pluralism. Wow. <clears throat> we celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. You can keep the book. <laughs> Anybody else who would like to read a card? Equity, oh, this happens to be my favorite. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. Justice, we work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions within our congregations, our association, and our society at large. Okay, we've got three more. Saw some hands on this side of the room. Interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence with reverence for the great web of life and with humility. We acknowledge our place in it. We covenant to protect earth and all beings from exploitation. We will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutuality and justice. We will work to repair harm and damaged relationships. Transformation. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages. Never complete and never perfect. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are all the ones we just mentioned. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for sharing those. So what do you think? Sound okay? Sound good? Can we agree to those? Remember, we're still back in June of 2023. So let's be delegates for a minute. Oop, didn't see how we'd vote. If you are in favor of the new proposed Article 2 changes, the list of values with love at the center, please raise your hand. Okay, I'm seeing many, 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 many hands for those on Zoom. Those opposed? That's okay. No gasping. We, uh, it is okay. We embrace diverse thought among us. So let's see how it really, really went. The changes passed with over 86% of the vote. So why are, we, why are we talking about this now? Well, that vote was actually for a, let's take a year, try it on, see how it fits, period, okay? So we're gonna vote again in June of 2024 to say, was that all right? Was that good? Or do we wanna think it over again and try again in a few years with something different? So as Unitarian Universalists, we are not expected to believe in a certain way about the origin of the universe or what happens after you die. But we are not the believe whatever you want church. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> While I guarantee that we in this room and through the magic of Zoom in the rooms we're linked to have very different beliefs from each other, there are certain values that we all share. We believe in treating each other with care. We believe in being stewards of our planet. We believe in a community of free thinkers. We believe in giving everyone a voice. Our beliefs are not about the myths of origin stories, but what we center our living and our actions around. Article 2 matters because it is an agreement that we make about what Unitarian Universalism means what we stand for, and how we present ourselves to the world. The U values of Article 2 that Jet Pig wants us to remember are justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, and generosity with love at the center. As I see it, these values are ways of putting love into action, and it's what our world needs. But ugh, change can be hard. Change is hard, but it's inevitable. Stretching, letting go can be difficult, but it's an opportunity. Challenging ourselves to come together and evolve in ways that our, cha that our changing world demands of us. Today, we've explored how our faith transforms. It's not always easy being a Unitarian Universalist. The freedom it grants us comes with a responsibility to live into our faith. Change isn't always easy, but it can be good. And empowered by love, we transform ourselves and serve our world. Let's embrace this transformation as we continue to grow our faith of love. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard, the path is never clear, and the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. By Wayne B. Arnason. <laughs>